Hi, this is Elias Knaser, and the following demonstration is from my Citrix Zen Desktop 4 training course. All right, so to launch this tool, we're going to click on Start, Programs, Citrix, Administrative Tools, or Administration Tools, Zen Desktop Setup Wizard. The wizard is very straightforward. Once it launches, we're going to click on Next. It automatically detected the DDC based on the Active Directory integration tool that we ran previously. So that tool made the necessary entry, entries in Active Directory. So the Zen Desktop Setup Wizard is able to detect it. It knows that the farm name is Ek. We're going to keep that selected. We're going to click on Next to continue. Now we have to specify the virtual infrastructure. Again, you have VMware infrastructure or you can choose Citrix uh, Zen Server. For our purposes, we're going to stay with VMware, and you'll notice we're pointing to virtual center, forward slash SDK, and I'm using HTTP, not HTTPS. So kind of the same exercise that we did when we were configuring the desktop delivery controller to connect to the virtual infrastructure. We're going to click on Next, and it's going to prompt us to authenticate to the virtual infrastructure, and we're going to do that with the administrator user account. Now keep in mind, in the earlier lesson when we were talking about the virtual center user permissions, if you had created that specific user, you can use that user to log on and, and enumerate virtual center and all the different virtual machines and templates that you have. Now we also created two templates, Windows 7 and Windows XP. So this step is basically asking, what do you want to model these virtual machines that you're about to create after? Which template do you want me to use to create these virtual machines from? We're going to stick with Windows 7 for now. We're going to click on Next. And now it's asking you, okay, so you told me which template from a compute perspective. Which virtual disk from provisioning server should I attach or should I attach these virtual machines so that I can stream to them? We're going to keep it obviously at Windows 7 version 1 and we're going to specify where we want it to place these new virtual or target devices that it's creating, which device collection. This is within provisioning server, of course. You can go ahead and create one if you choose to do so. Since I have one already that I want to use in provisioning server, I'm going to select virtual. Now at this point, it's asking you how many virtual machines you want me to create. You can create up to 100 if you want to, 200, 300, it doesn't matter. What's the naming convention that you want me to use? What is a common name that all these virtual desktops are going to have? In my case, what I want to do is name them VDI-Win7. Dash zero. And since we're creating five, you can take a look down here and it'll show you the range, what the naming convention is going to look like. So in my case, it's going to be VDI Win7-01 through VDI Win7-05. Now, if I change this and ask it to start from 10, then the naming convention becomes 10 through 14. So for our purposes, we're just going to stick with one for now and have it start at one. I'm going to click on next. At this point, it's asking, where do you want me to place the machine account names that I create in Active Directory? I wanted to place them under the Citrix OU, so this is pre-populated. You can select a different one if you choose to do so. So it's going to create the machines within provisioning server. It's going to create the, the account, the machine account names within Active Directory. And the next step, it's actually going to also create them within the desktop delivery controller. So now it's asking, what do you want me to do from the desktop delivery controller perspective? If you had desktop groups created, you can choose them from the drop down menu here. We don't have anything, so we're going to go ahead and select Windows 7 so that it can create that. And I wanted to give immediate access to these desktops. So I'm going to keep this checked. If you wanted to create the desktop group or you wanted to create these desktops, but you wanted to disable them, you would uncheck the box here. So we're going to keep this enabled for now. We're going to click on next. It's going to give you a nice summary of what it's about to do. We're going to click on next and see if it's going to go through the creation process. So let's go ahead and minimize it here and see what's going on in virtual center and see if we can see them getting created and you'll notice it's already started to create these virtual machines for us and voila you're going to notice that it created one two three four five virtual machines for us in a snap now let's go into our active directory take a look at what happens here you'll notice that it also created all the machine accounts in active directory now let's go into provisioning server Click on finish to get out of the wizard. Let's launch the provisioning services console and see what happened in there as well. Mm 
We're going to expand Eck. We're going to expand the site, Chicago. And let's take a look at the device collection virtual, which is where we placed everything. This is where we placed them all. If you select any of these disks at this point, you'll notice that if you go to the VDisk tab, it's already associated with the right VDisk. So everything should be ready to stream. What we're going to do now is we're going to log into the desktop delivery controller, take a look at the status and go ahead and power them on and see how we can stream five windows virtual machines off of the same disk. So we're going to go ahead and minimize the uh, provisioning server here. Let's go into the desktop delivery controller. And voila, take a look at that. They're all idle. Now, if we go into virtual center, you'll notice that all of the virtual machines are powered on and we could take a look at all of their consoles. Let's do this. Here's the first one streaming now if we go into edit settings again i'm honest <laughs> there's no hard drive right the only hard drive you have here is the one that's being used for the right cache click on cancel show you a couple more and then we can <laughs> we can move on let's go pick on number three open console Now you got to give it to me. It, it's cool, right? <laughs> You're able to stream five virtual machines in my case, because that's the only thing that the capacity will allow. But I've streamed up to 500 virtual machines off of a single provisioning server. Now that's kind of cool. And we've done that to physical boxes and virtual boxes as well, controlled from one single image. You update it once, you roll it back once. It's magic. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.